My name is Daryl Kwa. Welcome back to Business Live. In our first story tonight, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya has charged the newly inaugurated Ghana Deposit Protection Corporation to find innovative ways of ensuring the safety of depositors' funds. According to him, the corporation must be transparent to bring back public confidence in the banking sector. Dr. Bamiya made the call when opening the African Regional Assistance Committee workshop in Accra. Protection scheme is established to reimburse insured depositors where the Bank of Ghana revokes the licenses of a bank or specialized deposit taking institution. The scheme, which began operation, has been hailed as the perfect response to the cry of depositors. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, in a keynote speech at the workshop and unveiling ceremony for the scheme, taxed the corporation to make Ghana's banking sector attractive. Operating in a largely reformed financial sector. The corporation needs to ensure the necessary public education about the scheme, its operations, and benefits to every depositor. Such an education is invaluable, it's an invaluable public good, and we must get on with it as soon as possible. The general public must gain the confidence that even in the event of a failure of a financial institution, the funds of depositors are secure, at least to a certain limit. This new deposit insurance scheme, in addition to the sound prudential regulation by the Bank of Ghana, should ensure that the Ghanaian financial sector is set on a good path to financial stability. On his part, Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, expressed confidence that the establishment of the corporation provides the country with an opportunity to showcase the readiness to strengthen the financial sector. The establishment of GDPC therefore comes as a big relief and a welcome addition to Ghana's financial safety net apparatus as it puts the nation in a state of readiness to better manage the failure of banks and deposit taking financial institutions. Indeed, the importance of the deposit protection to stability cannot be overemphasized. And this is clearly illustrated by the theme of this workshop, deposit protection, a catalyst for financial stability. The corporation is the sole mandatory body for the deposit protection scheme. Eben Sabote's report for Joy Business. Our senior country partner at PricewaterhouseCoopers, Vish Ashiagbo, has described the 2020 budget as business friendly. Speaking to Joy Business after the organization's post budget forum in Accra, Mr. Ashiagbo said the budget presents some opportunities for growth of enterprises. Overall, businesses see this budget as business friendly um, because it's a continuation of the initiatives that were started by this government in 2017. And as you know, businesses like predictability, businesses like stability. So from that point of view, I think businesses find the budget to be friendly. On the other hand, I think there was some expectation from businesses that the measures that we've been discussing as a country towards broadening the tax base, we will begin to see some of those um, initiatives yielding fruit so that uh, the tax burden on the few can be lessened in favor of uh, broadening the net. So for example, the decision to extend the uh, National Fiscal Stabilization Levy for another five years um, came as a surprise because it was due to have, uh, have outlived its usefulness by the end of 2019. So there's one or two things like that that perhaps uh, businesses are not happy about. But broadly speaking, I think businesses, are, businesses do find the budget friendly, but now what they would like to see is an acceleration of implementation. Do you think that there is more? Well, also tonight, the validation exercise to begin the process of paying back locked-up investments um, is underway. The exercise is said to be, however, fought with several challenges at designated branches of the Consolidated Bank, Ghana, CBG. Fred Uo has been to the Kokumlimli branch and reports. I have one gentleman here with me to share some experience with us. Hello, welcome to Joy Business. Thank you. Uh, when did you come here and what have they been telling you? Oh, I've been here for the last 10 minutes. They just told us to go for the forms. And uh, the forms are finished here. So some people are taking advantage and they are selling the forms. So that's what I went to buy. For how much? 50 pesos per form. 50 pesos. Okay, so after filling this form, what, have they given you any guidance as to how to fill this form? 
no, some people are sitting there. It's all overcrowded. When you go, they will not get the time to actually um, help you out because many people are there. Mm. But I believe it's the pressure over there. Mm. Yeah. And so what will be your expectations after filling this form? Well, I'm expecting the money to come before Christmas, if it's possible, so that we can have something because people are really suffering. Uh, this money has been with them for quite a long time now. And uh, it's not helping anybody. It, we feel cheated. We feel, I mean, we, as if we've been robbed. So if they can settle us quick, we'll be okay. Already we've lost a lot as a result of this. Which of the fund managements have you invested with? Uh, Goku go, go um, Fund Management, currently Black Shell Capital. But are you hopeful that you're going to get your entire investment with interest? Hmm. That's what should be, but I doubt if they will, be, they will be doing that. Will you be comfortable with any amount they offer you from now because uh, you look so desperate? You, you use the word so desperate. I'm, I'm not, we are not comfortable with any amount because this is a legal uh, establishment that we, de we are dealing with. So, like everything should go normally. We shouldn't, if, if anything at all, we shouldn't be the casualties, the regulators. And all those are the people who, are, who must be held because we, we, we must put our confidence in them. We did. And that's the, what it's turning out to be. Um, okay, so uh, you just heard from of the aggrieved customers or one of the people who currently are here to fill the validation form to begin processes of getting their uh, investment from their fund managers. Fred Duho, Joy Business. Well, so that was the situation in Accra. Let's take you next to the Ashanti region, to Kumasi specifically, where customers of defunct fund management companies were left disappointed on the first day of the validation exercise. Now, the over 1,000 customers were left stranded at the various branches of CBG. Prince Apia has our report from the Ashanti region. So we are here at the Consolidated Bank of Ghana branch at Edum, and there are hundreds of um, customers of the defunct fund management companies here to be part of the validation exercise scheduled to begin today. But surprisingly, it's almost 12, and most of them have been here since 6 a.m., and nothing at all is happening here. No official is present, and what has become of the customers here is that they've decided to form queues and write down their names so that perhaps if the exercise will start today, they would have a smooth exercise. But what they are telling us is that they are really stranded and they are disappointed in the exercise that was supposed to start today, but nothing has started. We do have five church. I have been here since 5 a.m. We are happy the validation is starting. I am number 33, but no one is attending to us. I came here around 6 30 to 7. We are standing, nobody is standing as anything. When we call the circle light, they will tell us that they are coming, they are coming, they are coming, but nobody is coming. So we are all standing, even some people have left here. No tent here. So now they will number up to more than 600. We are really disappointed because by now should have been to work. But as you can see, we've all stopped work and we are here just waiting for the personnel to come. And none of them is in. And nobody is telling us anything. We expected them to start about 8 o'clock. Since uh, we know banks start working at 8.30, but we have waited for more than four hours. There's no show up. No, there's nobody here. If you ask the, G, G, uh, the bank, they don't know anything about the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the exercise. And we are expecting them to come and start uh, the validation. We, we, we are appealing to the government to speed up things. People are suffering. We will see the queue, so many old, old men. I... The expectation is that authorities will come to their aid and begin the exercise for them so that they would at least have some hope, especially as Christmas approaches. My name is Prince Sapia reporting. 
Meanwhile, rural and community banks want government to give them payment priority in the refund of locked up investments in collapsed uh, fund management firms and other financial institutions. Managing Director of ARB Apex Bank, Ojo Mata, says it will enable players in the sector to have access to funds for effective running of institutions. Nanai Aljima was at the climax of the seventh Rural Banking Week celebration and filed this report. More than half of locked up investments are that of rural and community banks. Regulatory body, the Security and Exchange Commission, has cited protection of the integrity of the securities market and investors as reasons for its action. Affected institutions were put under receivership as customers are verified to rectify challenges. Officials say the measure is biting hard on rural banks who had invested in such institutions. Mr. Mata pleads rural banks be given some priority in paying their customers. We woke up last Friday, November 8th, to the news of revocation of operating licenses of 53 finance houses. One of the major unintended consequences of this latest, latest regulatory crackdown is that many of our rural community banks have, they, have, have had their funds locked up with these fund management companies. Since liquidity is the lifeblood of every bank, we shall be extremely grateful if the Federal Deputy Governor and uh, the Finance Minister could use your good offices to help expedite the process of paying up the RCD's locked up funds, locked up investments with these finance houses. Mr. Mata, however, retreats. The banks are in good position to serve clients in spite of the setback. Again, I want to assure the general public that rural and community banks are resilient. We, we are able to serve them, we are able to uh, pay them their deposits as and when they are in need of their deposits. So no rural bank is going anywhere. The general public should rest assured that the rural banks are here to serve them and they should continue doing business with rural and community banks in their communities. Rural banks hold about 6.5 million customers with over 3.5 billion cities in deposits and credits to more than 2.5 million customers. Ability of these clients to be well served will depend largely on liquidity. Bank of Ghana, however, gives assurance the funds will soon be released to affected institutions. Dr. Maxwell Opokwa Ferry is first deputy governor. We are aware that a number of large institutional depositors, including financial institutions and the rural banks, have their funds locked up with the microfinance and savings and loans institutions. I want to announce that an understanding has been reached among the Ministry of Finance, the Bank of Ghana, and the receiver to find a way to unlock these funds. Our on, on, on modalities are ongoing, and once that is concluded, we will announce the modalities very soon. Nanae Ojima reporting. Well, also today, some steel factory workers at the Free Zones Enclave at Tema have agitated against smoke emissions in the area. The workers clad in red called on government to fast-track interventions to clamp down on steel factories flouting regulations of the Environmental Protection Agency. Charles Aite was there. These steel factory workers at the Free Zones Enclave are frustrated over the emission of smoke from two main steel factories, Radha Steel and United Steel. With placards reading toxic emissions is unacceptable. People should be held responsible. We are dying slowly. The factory workers complained their lives have been endangered by these emissions. It didn't feel difficult to even breathe inside because of the smoke. So, like, sometimes we find it difficult even coming to work because of the smoke. I was even told by the doctor that if that should be the case, I should stop the work because I can't continue jeopardizing my health because of the, the, the smoke. So that's what the doctor told me. I have my X-ray report over there that the doctor asked me to go and do it. Do you understand? For the past two weeks ago, I have been suffering from coughing because of this smoke. I'm dying and the company is not doing anything for us too. 
The demonstration follows some investigations by Joy Business on how smoke emissions by some steel factories at the Free Zones Enclave is not only destroying the environment but also putting lives of factory workers at risk. On a visit to some steel factories at the Free Zones Enclave in Tema, plumes of smoke engulfs the whole environment. The thick smoke darkens the environment, impairing visibility and breath. The smoke emissions have so far caused a shutdown of one steel factory. Felix is a supervisor at MND Metals, another factory at the receiving end of these emissions. We have done all we are supposed to do. We have reported this to management, reported it to necessary authorities that should work or should help this thing be resolved. But up to now, we are still waiting and we are still fighting. So today we are bringing this agitation because our message that we sent across is still not being heard. These factory workers, still factory workers, are saying that government must intervene as a matter of urgency, especially when four out of six of their colleagues who were hitherto sick are no more with them. Ghana ranked 124 in the 2018 Environmental Protection Index, which ranks 180 countries on environmental health and ecosystem vitality. What this means is that the country has performed poorly when it comes to being environmentally safe. And for these steel factory workers, now is the time for authorities to act. So after 11 months of preparation and intense training, two businesses will be crowned ultimate winners of the 2019 uh, edition of the Cosmos Innovation Center Agritech Challenge. On Tuesday, the teams all set out to solve problems in the agri value chain with their innovative ideas and are all vying for a cash prize of $50,000. Joy Businesses' Karen Dodu has the rest of the story. It all started in November 2018 when the call was made for entries into the fourth edition of the competition. From the 600 entries that were made, 300 were called for interview, out of which 120 were finally selected for the competition. But not until they made it through a rigorous physical training exercise at the Army Recruits Training School in Shy Hills. Swing your hands across the chest right. and be in threes. <sighs> yeah, I, I really thought it was going to be easy, but it's the hardest thing I've done in the longest while. So I honestly didn't think I would be able to do it because I it got my legs injured yesterday, but I just kind of pushed through it and I'm really glad that I did. It's been such an awesome experience. This and many more capacity building exercises and market research works were organized all in a bid to prepare the participants for the business world, teaching them lessons on topics such as time management, teamwork and leadership. There's a need for it uh, because you need to be addressing a problem out there. There's a problem out there you're addressing so and then the market for it. So if, if there's no, no uh, you're not addressing any issues and all that, so how will your product be, uh, you know, will be accepted by the, by the market. By May 2019, the participants were grouped, creating 21 teams, where each team built an innovative business idea based on technology. Takeaway packs. Now, this is in a bid to increase the quantity of honey for sale, and it's, it, it poses serious threats to our consumers. We also have unexploited raw materials, which serves, which is waste, which we treat as waste in this country. Last but not least, there's unhygienic handling and poor security during aggregation of coconut at our conventional depots in Accra now. What differentiates us from them is our ability to produce farm-made feed that is relatively cheaper than what they import into the country at the moment. But to see the best out of the rest, the number was dropped to 16, then later to 11 after the second pitch in July. For their final pitch in September, all 11 businesses mounted the stage with their A-game, each ready to prove their business ideas were worth the ultimate price. So this one, part, one, one product 
the room currently is bright and so it's automatically on. So when the place is, is very dark, it comes on automatically. There's another product that will be using um, GPS and GSM. And with that, the farmer at wherever he is could turn the system on at night and during the day, he turns it off automatically. The understanding of this, that Eat Fresh has developed our Shelf Life Pro, which is an organic solution, which when applied post-harvest to the surface of tomatoes, forms a thin coat around the tomatoes that inhibits microbial attack. Um, we are to have a slicing blade at the side a slicing blade. It's in um, a radial form, a cutter. Okay. okay. So as the conveyor moves and then gets to this side, there's one beneath and there's one on top. As it gets to the blade and it passes through, it slices it open and it falls into the box and then the beans is collected. So which two teams will emerge ultimate winners? Agroplast, Cocoa Boye, Thermostore, AI Scarecrow, Coconut World, Climatec, Farm Code, Prosect Feed, UG Green Technologies, Farm Class, or eat fresh where well, you can watch the announcement of the joy news channel on the am show at 8 am for joy business karen dudu All right, so we'll find out tomorrow who uh, walks away or which team walks away with the fifty thousand uh, dollars. That's right here on Joy News as we cover the KIC Agritech Challenge. That man you're seeing in your shorts tonight uh, is the new Chief Executive Officer of Airtel Tigo. I'm talking about Muthi Shangati. Uh, the telecoms giant issued a press statement uh, today. I want to read bits of it for you. Um, it says that uh, concerning Muthi Changati, says that the telecom operator Airtel has appointed uh, Muthi Changati as the new chief executive officer of the company until his appointment. He was the chief operating officer of the company and acted as a CEO from September 2019 until his appointment. He played a key role in the successful integration process of Airtel Ghana and Millicom Ghana operators of Tigo brand after the merger of the two uh, telecoms giants in Ghana. Following the completion of the integration record time, the first of its kind in Africa and delivering sin significant savings in operating expense, Mr. Shangati assumed additional responsibility of leading the commercial function to focus and deliver growth we saw a turnaround of data growth mr shangati brings a wealth experience wealth of experience in general management commercial and business strategy sales and marketing having spent over 20 years in various roles within the telecom uh, tele telecommunication and fast-moving consumer goods sectors in ghana and india prior to joining airtel tigo on the 3rd of january 2018 as Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Shangati served in senior leadership roles in the telecommunication industry in India. And you can read more about him on our website, myjoeonline.com forward slash business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks for watching our program tonight. I'll be back same time tomorrow.